All right. So, um, today we're going to be learning about nonlinear systems of equations and the difference is that, and we're just doing two variables, two equations. And the difference is that instead of all of the equations being of degree one, it could be a degree higher, or it could be a higher degree mixed in with linear equations or something like that. And you'll see from the examples how it differentiates itself from just standard linear equations and linear systems of equations. So um, it's similar, it's the same way that we solve linear systems of equations with substitution and elimination. Um, it's very similar in, in the methods that you use, and I figured I'd go through some examples in different situations of non of nonlinear systems of equations and show you guys how to solve those using substitution and elimination. So, um, going with our first example, this is a this is a situation of a system of nonlinear equations where you have a line and a parabola. And you can see visually, if we're looking for where the lines cross, or where the, where the lines intersect each other, or I guess I should say lines with the graphs intersect each other, um, there are situations where you can have no solutions, and there are situations where you can have one solution, and then there are situations where you can have two solutions um, to the nonlinear systems of equations for this case. So I'll give you guys a second to draw that out if you want to just draft a sketch of uh, what that looks like real quick. And we will get these posted in Canvas as well. Right. So going into an example for substitution, um, we have x minus y equals negative one and y equals x squared minus one. And we can see that that top equation is a linear equation because both your variables are um, to the first power. And you can see that the bottom one is actually a parabola because you have an x squared in there. You have a y equals x squared type of graph. And um, so what would be my first step, do you think, in and using substitution to solve this to solve this system. Again, what y equals to the first one? Right, right. So we're just gonna plug in um, y equals or we're gonna plug in y into the top equation. So if y equals x squared minus one, if we can just plug that into our top equation, we get x minus the quantity x squared minus one is equal to negative one. And then we distribute the negative. So then after we distribute the negative, we get x minus x squared plus one equals a negative one. And then after that, if I'm going too fast, just let me know. Um, after that, if we add the one over, um, we get x minus x squared plus two equals zero. And what we're trying to do is we're trying oh, to- Oh no, did I forget to plug it in? I thought I plugged it in. Oh, what do you do? No, I did plug it in. It's still on. Whoa, what's this? Okay, so WebEx is still here. Yeah. That does. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so I take one. If y'all do y'all have machines with you, mm -hmm. if you all just log into WebEx, then you'll be able to see. What Michael's talking about. I'm sorry, guys. The podium system simply. Yeah, and we don't know when. So that's okay. You that's just keep system. on going. It's 2020. You know? Yeah. And things happen. Yeah. So we're gonna roll with it. I'm just gonna hover back here and see if I can get it back on. So don't mind me. Oh, it works over here. Let's see if it works. Oh, perfect. So yeah. just watch the monitor. Right. There we go. Okay. Ah. Crazy stuff. I uh, just move our little window out of the way. Oh yeah, that'd be good. So we can see. Fascinating. Huh. All right. 
there. Perfect. Yeah. So after I'm just rearranging the terms in this next step, I'm just trying to make it look like something that I can factor. So I can figure out the X values for the zeros of this function. I'm just trying to find the zeros. So after I do that, I just divided everything by negative one. Just to turn into something that I can factor. And can anybody tell me what this factors into? Zero minus one. Close. Very close. Be careful with the sign in the middle. X minus two. Right. Cool. X minus two, X plus one. Um, and then this, and then solving this, you get X equals negative one and two for your X values of your solutions. And these are just, these aren't your solutions. These are the X values to your solutions. And then after that, or I'll just let you guys write that down real quick. And then after that, you just plug in your X values to find the two solutions. So this was one of the two solutions. You plug in your X values into one of the two top equations in the top left, and then for X and then solve for Y. So I just plugged in X for that bottom equation there for Y equals X squared minus one. Um, so you get, if you plug in the negative one solution for X, for X equals negative one, you get Y equals uh, the quantity negative one squared minus one, and then that turns into y equals one minus one, and then that turns into y equals zero. So that's the y value for the solution at negative one. And then that, and then one of the solutions to the graph is negative one zero. And then you do the same thing, but in, instead of plugging in negative one, we're gonna be plugging in two. So you get y equals two squared minus one, and then you get y equals four minus one, and then you get y equals three for the y value of the solution at x equals two. So two, three, the point two, three is another solution to the, to the graph or to the system of nonlinear equations. Okay. All right. And then I'm just gonna go through the same example, but instead of doing uh, substitution, I'm going to be doing elimination method on it to show you how it kind of makes it the same, how it comes out with the same solution. Okay. So to do the elimination method on this one, um, really it's, it's written in a form so that we have a negative Y and a Y. Um, Something important to note is that you want, when you have, when you're doing a parabola and a line, is that you want to try to cancel out the, the variable that's not being squared so that you can get all, all terms being multiplied by the same variable, if that makes sense. So, so we're gonna try to cancel out the y's so that we can just get x's and then we can actually solve it. So if we just add the two equations together, like we do with elimination, you get X minus Y plus Y equals negative one plus X squared minus one. Does that make sense, everybody? And then just, you know, combining like terms, the negative Y and the plus Y, they just cancel each other out. And then the, I'm just subtracting, I'm combining the negative one and the negative one together on the right side to get X squared minus two. And then if you subtract the X squared and add the two on the other side, you get everything we got before, except for it just got you there faster and you have every single step being the same. So they end up algebraically being equivalent to each other, which is what we want. Yes. I think I'm just missing something. Um, for the first step, it says like X minus Y plus Y. Where are you getting that plus Y? So in the elimination method, you you add, the two, you end up adding the two equations together, right? So on the left side, I'm gonna be adding, so on this side, 
I'm going to be adding x minus y and then plus y on that left side. And then negative and then negative one plus x squared minus one on the right side. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good question. It's hard sometimes when we're used to seeing something vertically to to translate horizontally. It messes me up all the time. You gotta be smart. Yeah. You did good. No, it's a good explanation. Thank you. So that's how you solve this using two different methods. And then visually, this is the, the red line. What's the graph of the red line? What, what graph is that? The parabola x squared. Right. So this is the graph for x squared minus 1. And then the, um, the blue line is the graph for y minus x equals negative 1. I'm sorry, positive 1. Or yeah. Positive 1. So y equals x. x minus y equals negative 1. Right. Sorry, I forgot to. Um, and then you can see that they actually cross at the point negative 1, 0, and 2, 3. So we got what we wanted. It's great. Okay. So going into the next situation, um, we're going to find the solution for a line and a circle. And you can see visually it's, it has the same outcomes. So you have no solution, um, one solution, or two solutions. And then how is the, do you guys know what it's called, how the, the, um, the line relates to the circle when there's one solution? What is that called? Do you guys know what that's called? Yeah, exactly. It's a tangent line. So when it just hits that, it hits the circle at a tangent. Very good. So I'll let you guys draw that out real quick. So using the substitution example, it's pretty much very similar to the last time. We have the, the example x squared plus y squared equals 5, and then um, y equals 3x minus 5. And all we have to do is just plug in the 3x minus 5 in for y into the top equation. And then we get x squared plus 3x minus, plus the quantity 3x minus 5 squared equals 5. And then for the next step, I think that got messed up. Sorry about that. For the next step, just ignore the one in the top right. And the next step, you're going to be just doing FOIL method on the 3x minus 5 squared. And that's going to be 9x squared minus 30x plus 25. And then the next step, just combine your like terms. And then make it look like something that you can factor. So you can use your factoring method. And then what, what would you guys do first to try and factor something like this? Take out a 10. Exactly. Take out a 10. Make it a lot easier. And then how do you factor this bottom one? Or how do you factor the inner parentheses part? What does that factor into? Yes. X minus two and X minus one. Exactly. So that just factors into 10 times X minus two times the quantity X minus two times the quantity X minus one equals zero. And then you get X equals one and two. And then it's very similar to finding the Y values last time. You just plug it in to the one of the top left equations. I chose the bottom one because that seems a lot easier arithmetically to use. So y equals the first x value is one. So I'm going to do y equals three times one minus five. And then that turns into y equals three minus five. And then y equals negative two. So one negative two is the solution to the nonlinear system of equations. And then you get 
y equals three times two minus five for the x equals two part of the solution. And then you get y equals six minus five. And then you get y equals one. So another solution to the graph would be uh, two one. So you guys copy that down real quick. Okay, so then I'm just going to do the same thing, but instead of using substitution, I'm going to use the same example with elimination. Um, and then, so with elimination, what would, what would be your guys' first step that you think that you'd use to do elimination on something like this? What do you guys think is the first thing that I should do? It's a little tricky, but what do you guys think is the first thing I should do for, for this type of Nonlinear systems of equations. Almost. You want to take a guess? Let's um, multiply the bottom equation by um, negative square. I don't know if that would make sense. I'm Squaring sure. the bottom equation? Square it and then make it negative so the y square and the y will cancel out. Dang. All right. Nice. <laughs> Good job. Exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, yeah, so basically you're just going to be squaring the bottom equation um, so that you'll be able to cancel them out after you pull, multiply it by negative 1. So you get y is equal, or y squared is equal to the quantity 3x minus 5 squared. And then you get, and then just foiling it out, you get y squared equals 9x squared minus 30x plus 25. And then doing exactly like you said. Uh, you get negative y squared is equal to negative 9x squared plus 30x minus 25. And then going into the next step, this is my elimination step. I know it's, I know maybe I should have written it vertically so that it looks more like elimination, but I'm just adding. I'm just adding these two together, and then I'm adding these two together. So here I'm adding them together and doing the elimination step. Does that make sense? How does that y square become negative? Because uh, we multiplied it by negative by negative one. So we went y squared equals nine x squared minus thirty x plus twenty five, and then we multiplied it by negative one on both sides. Why did you do that? So that when we do our elimination step, uh -huh. these two cancel out. Uh, okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay. And then just doing some algebraic simplification and a lot of it, uh, you get x squared plus 9x squared minus 30x equals negative 20. So I'm just adding the 5 and then I get 25 to get negative 20. And then I'm adding the 9x squared and subtracting the 30x over. You guys see that? Just doing multiple algebraic steps at once. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I think it's fair. They've been doing algebra all year, so. That's true. So they're there. I have to think about it a minute, but I know you all will see it. Okay. And then that turns into if you just add the 20, the 20 over, and then you add the x squared and the 9x squared together to combine like terms, you just do everything that I did in the last example, and you get the same answer like you wanted. Yeah. Um, my brain just gets slightly confused when we have to put the two equations together. So can, yeah. I, see, can I see it like written top and bottom, like on the whiteboard? Maybe that'll like help me visualize it. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. Yeah, I can do that.
So I think it was um, y squared plus. We're going way over here. But it's just the idea of vertical alignment. I don't know if they can see it or not, but that's okay. They'll understand, and then, don't you? Uh, y equals 3x minus 5. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then when we square both sides and, and then pull it out and then multiply it by negative 1, we get negative y squared Negative y squared equals negative nine x squared. Plus 30 x minus 25. Does that make sense so far? Yes. And then if I just move this top equation over here. I have y squared. Plus x squared equals five, and now I have a y squared on top, and I have a negative y squared down here. So when I do I do my eliminations and then I add together, these are just going to cancel out, like how we want to. And then now I have x squared equals negative nine x squared plus thirty x. Minus 25 plus 5. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good question. Are we writing that down? Uh, no, I got it in like. Okay, good. I've got it all in your head. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. So just visually, this is what it looks like graphically. Uh, we can see that it goes through the point one, negative two, and two, one, like we said it would. So we did get what we wanted. And this is what it looks like just when it intersects. Okay. So, and then going into our last case scenario, um, we have the solutions for an ellipse and a circle. So we can see that there are a lot of different cases that you can have for an ellipse and a circle. Um, you, know, you can have no solution, one solution, two solutions, three solutions, or four solutions, just depending on what it looks like. So I'll give you guys time to, to draw that out if you want to. You notice all of these either have no solution or a finite number of solutions. So what makes this different that we can't have infinitely many solutions? Because they're not in like the same shape, so they can't. Good, that's exactly right. They can't coincide, right? That's how we got infinitely many solutions with our linear systems, because two equations might be describing the same line. But if one's a line and one's a parabola, or one's a circle and one's a line, they can't possibly coincide, so you're never going to have that infinite number. Now, here, if you had two circles, you possibly could. Yeah. So if you have two shapes or two equations that represent the same kind of curve, the infinite solutions are possible. But when you've got, like in these examples, notice it's kind of cool that you won't, you'll only have a finite number of solutions. Yeah, and then the only the only case scenarios if they're both circles would be no solutions or infinitely many. That's right. It, it'd be too big to be able to overlap any. Well, they could shift it. They could do these same things if they're yeah. both circles. You could still it'd have it'd be uh, it'd be one or one, two, none, or infinity. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we're doing right now. So. Right. Right. Way to throw me off track. I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> Thinking on your feet. You're doing great. Thank you. Um, do you want to address, oh, that got moved, okay. Do you want to address, by the way, the, the whole, like, infinite solution? You emailed me about the... Uh... Oh, yeah, I tell you what, we'll talk about that Monday, and we'll do inequalities Monday. Okay, that sounds good. We can pick those up on Monday. Okay, so I'll just show just my picture real quick. Out. I can show my picture real quick just to, like, okay. just to, like, give them an intro. Okay. 
to that. Okay. So last case scenario, we have um, circles and ellipses. And I'll go through uh, real quick. So we'll do. We're going to do elimination with this type of thing. Um, so we have four x squared plus y squared equals thirteen, and then x squared plus y squared equals ten. And then here, I'm just let's see here. Oh, I see. Okay. So here I'm just trying to eliminate, you can eliminate the X or the Y's because they're an equal amount of them, just whatever you want to do. Um, and here I'm just multiplying the bottom equation by negative one. So that way I can cancel out the Y into, in the top equation. Does that make sense? So I get negative X squared plus negative one times the quantity X squared plus Y squared equals negative 10. And then negative X squared minus Y squared equals negative 10. And then this is my elimination step. So you're just adding the left and the right together. So I get 4X squared plus Y squared minus X squared minus Y squared equals 13 minus 10. And then just combining like terms, the negative Y squared and the plus Y squared cancel out like we wanted to. And then 4X squared minus X squared is 3X squared. And then 13 minus 10 is equal to 3. And then you just divide both sides by 3, and you get x squared equals 1. And this is important. Make sure that you guys do, when you guys take the square root, you get you take the plus or minus. Because these aren't, these aren't, these are circles, so you have to take the plus and minus when you're doing the square root. Um, and then you get x equals plus or minus 1. And then just same as before, just figuring out the y values, you plug in the x values into the, in the top left. For either equations, I decided to do it into the bottom equation so you can do less arithmetic. So you get 1 squared plus y squared equals 10. And then 1 plus y squared equals 10. And then y squared equals 9. And again, you need to make sure that you take the plus or minus. So you get y equals plus or minus three. And then when you go from that step to finding all your solutions, you need to take every combination and how x and y can match up together. So let's see here. Oh, I'm doing negative one too. So I'm doing this next step, I'm doing x equals negative one into the equation. So x equals negative one squared plus y squared, and then that turns into one plus y squared, and it's just the same. So when you're taking every single combination, the solutions are um, one, three, so positive, positive, positive one, positive three solution, one, negative three, so positive one, negative three solution, uh, negative one, three, so negative one, positive three solution, and then negative one, negative three. And that's where they're both negative for the solutions. Sorry, here. Okay, so just kind of looking at the graph, you can see that we did figure out what we wanted to figure out. It does go through all four of those points like we wanted to, and like how we want to find the solution to that. And then um, that's it as far as all the examples that we're going to be doing for nonlinear systems of the equation. I really appreciate you guys asking a lot of questions and being very responsive. I really appreciate that. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, if y'all have any questions, let us know. We'll hang around a little bit. If not, y'all have a great weekend and see you Monday. Thank you.